Hey guys, welcome to episode 12 of the North Wing, and I am standing on my slab. Bro. <laughs> A lot of stuff went on the last couple times that we uh, chatted. First, we did a little bit of waterproofing. So I'll show you that it's all backfilled now. I was supposed to do a rubber membrane, but um, it was too cold and too wet, and so I ended up doing a fluid applied. I have about an hour, we're waterproofed. Plan was to get as much done on this wall here to see how much we had left, and then basically dump the rest on the ledge. Came out a little thicker than I want on the ledge, so let's just hope that it uh, dries enough for tomorrow. So after that was done, we backfilled over here, we backfilled in here, and we backfilled across here. Bro. And of course, we poured the slab. Super fun to see the size of the space start to get get the sense of the scale, and of course, get ready to start framing this thing. So what I wanna to do today is, first we're gonna talk about um, how I'm accessing the model while I'm standing out here on my iPad. And then I'm also gonna show you um, how I'm keeping track of schedule. Um, so I'm using a couple different tools, including Revit and Notion. First, we'll talk a little bit about the iPad. As I've mentioned in a couple different videos in the past, um, there's different ways that you can view Revit on the iPad. You know, you can use Jump Desktop, which I have a video about that. Um, but for this, I really want to access the model real quick um, and then also the sheets. So if I jump in here, you can see I'm accessing the sheets. And so I'm actually using the free Autodesk viewer. So jump in the office, I'll quickly tell you about that. I'm gonna link a video below to a full length video where I describe the process. But what I'm actually using is a free viewer from Autodesk. Everyone out there, if you're watching this video, you probably have an Autodesk account. Um, I think you can even make one um, without having like a Revit license. You can make an Autodesk account, but if you have a Revit license or an AutoCAD license or anything like that, you have an Autodesk account. And so with that, what you can do is you can actually go to viewer.autodesk.com and you can log in and you can upload any file type, honestly, it's it's pretty much anything that you can view in ACC or their web-based platforms uh, you can view in here. Now for a project like this, it just doesn't make financial sense to create an ACC server, an Autodesk construction cloud server. If it was a larger project, there was more people involved, then that's what I would do for field viewing. But because it doesn't make sense, it's just me and a couple other people here and there that I need to show it with, it just doesn't make sense to do it. So utilizing this free viewer is awesome. One caveat is um, it expires every 30 days. Um, so if you forget to extend it, it expires. <laughs> but it gives you all the viewing access that you need and, there's a, and you can view it on the iPad, which is awesome. Um, so the only thing you need to know is uh, you need to set up your published settings in Revit. So on the Revit side of things, it doesn't need to be a cloud work shared model. Um, all you have to do is go over to collaborate and this is not a cloud or this is not a cloud work shared or a work setted model, right? This is just a local file. It's just me, no work sets in, are set up but I can still set these things up by going to publish settings. So under collaborate, go to publish settings. And what you do is you 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 create a set. Um, you can see this was called permit set with 3D and you include the views and the sheets that you'd want. So you could see I have building framing, building framing first floor, primary bath, et cetera, et cetera. And then I have all my sheets in here. So you, you, you set the views you want, you create a set and you say save and close. You save your file. So if you didn't save it already, you save it. Um, and by setting up those publish settings um, and saving your file, all you have to do is upload that file by clicking upload here and it'll process and it'll have all that information. So if I jump into this one here, what you'll see is if I zoom in, I have the ability to access all this and this is exactly how it looks on the iPad. Um, on the iPad, I am just going, I'm using a link um, into the browser and it works perfectly fine. And on your phone too, it'll work as well. Um, so you can see here's my 3D views on the left. So if I go through each one of these, I have some different building framing views. Um, there's a structural framing one here, etc. So there's all these different views that you set up and it's gonna take um, the filters and some of the things that you've set up there as well as my sheets so I can go through. And so. I can measure, I can click on objects and get information from them and so on and so forth. So this is how I'm utilizing the iPad to view my models in the field. It's been useful. I've already had it out there a few times um, 
when concrete was out there, I was doing a couple things um, and being able to sort of not spin around and look at it, but also be able to dimension and so on and so forth. Super easy, super simple. So make sure you set your published settings, save your file, upload it to viewer.autodesk.com, and then you can share your link with yourself or wherever, um, and then just open on whatever device you want. So that's a little bit about how I'm accessing the drawings and the model out here in the field. Keeping track of the schedule is something that's kind of interesting. I'm actually trying uh, something a little different in Notion. So I wanted to show you guys that, but I'm also keeping track in Revit. So I'm gonna show you guys that as well. All right, now when it comes to actually tracking progress in the field, uh, this is something that, again, it's not a super complex project. So there's certain items that might not give us as much data as we want, but I am actually tracking progress in the field and I am keeping track of this schedule. Um, if you saw the previous episode where I talked about uh, being a GC as an architect and I showed Project Libre, which is a more in-depth um, scheduling tool, that can be a little daunting to keep up to date as you're just sort of tracking through. So what I'm trying to do is I'm actually trying to use Notion. Um, I found some really cool tools in Notion to be able to quickly track the progress of what's going on in the field, but I'm also utilizing the model to keep track of things too. So first, what we'll do is we'll talk about the model. And so here's the here's the Revit model. I'm going to go to my tracking view, which looks like this here. And anything that's purple is installed. And so basically what I've done here is in my project, I've got project parameter setup. Um, I've got one called installed and one called installed date. And so if I select this wall, for example, what you'll notice is that it's installed and it was installed on March 12th. So right now I can create like a Power BI dashboard or a schedule or whatnot, but right now I'm just kind of using it as visual, a visual cue. And this view, it, it just has a filter that says install status. And so if it's set to yes, and then it turns purple. If it's if it's not installed, then it's half toned with with no uh, with no color gradient. So for example, if I was to install, you know, this column right here, I would select it, simply go over to check installed, put in a date, let's say April 12th, 2025 press enter and then boom, there you go. And so it's a nice way to visually track what's going on. So that's one way, right? That's just a quick way. And then you know what you can do with that data, you can bring it out to like Power BI, which you've, you may have seen some episodes on my channel about that. Um, you can create schedules even in Revit and just sort of look at it that way. But right now I'm using it more of as a, as a visual tool. Um, what I'm more excited about is I've been, I've been digging into Notion a little bit more. Um, when it comes to things like general contracting on your own project, um, there's just a lot of information all over the place. And typically I would handle that in a project folder with subfolders and files, Excel sheets, all that good stuff. I'm sort of building my own database within um, Notion now and trying to get a feel for the tools that Notion gives me um, to do these type of things. And so tracking and schedule is one of those examples. If I flip over to the project, this is the North Wing project page. Um, you can see I've got different different pages for all different stuff. Like I think I showed the bid tracking one in episode nine um, and some of the information in episode nine. Um, I have a weekly to-do list, um, which which is just very simple. I just have what, what I wanna get done that week and then I'm checking it off as, as I go along. But what I want to show you is the schedule tracking notebook. And so this is something that I've never done before on Notion, <clears throat> and I'm really enjoying the way it works. It started with uh, a simple table. Um, so I created a tracking table here that has the date, it has an activity, and then a comment. And then I started to, to understand that Notion actually has some really cool tools with even putting logic within these. And so in the date field, what I can do is I can actually give a start date and an end date. Um, activity, obviously I can just type in the activity, but then I can also do um, logic between, um, between some of these activities. So first what I started doing was just filling this table out just so I had the data there. Then I found out that I can actually change the view in, in Notion to have a Gantt chart. And so here's all those activities. If I go to month, you could see there's month there. And if I go to week, it might be a little easier to see if I go to week, you could see here's here's some of the um, some of the latest tasks. And you'll notice what I can do is I can actually I can actually connect some of these. So like, for example, slab prep can be connected to poor slab, right? And so on and so forth. And I can move along and sort of see it. And <clears throat> this has been helpful just to sort of see it graphically um, as needed. And this is this is actually the let's call it the as-built schedule, right? This is this is the real, real world. So um, you can see it starts with excavation and, and it's ending with lumber delivery. And so I'm just filling this in as we go along. So now I have this information to look back on for this job, but also to use as information for other projects. But what's really nice too is, is within the same database, you can also uh, look at it via calendar, which I think is really cool. Um, so I can go in here and I can say, okay, lumber delivery, let's just say we're gonna start framing this day. I'll just say 
you know, framing start or start framing. And you can see there's this, if I wanted to, to add a, more information to it, each one of these also has its own little page, which is kind of cool. So if you need pictures or, or information for that specific task, you can actually link it to that. And so it becomes this big database and notice start framing is, is now here. It's now here in this tracking table. And so now I have this, this ability to sort of maintain and, 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 uh, and, and view the history of of what's going on in this project. So if you guys haven't tried Notion out for this, I, I suggest that you sort of dig in, start understanding it a little bit. I am personally am still understanding it. I've used Notion for a long time, just as sort of a note keeping tool, and I've never expanded beyond that. And so I've, I've been trying to do that more and more. Um, I didn't create the initial schedule using this, but maybe there's an opportunity for a more high level schedule using this type of tool. So that's how I'm keeping track of the schedule or keeping an eye on where we are. What's going on right now the rest of this week? Well, I'm standing currently in the formwork for the patio slab. So that's actually getting poured this afternoon. Uh, once that's done, concrete is done um, and lumber is delivered tomorrow. And then we're gonna start framing this thing. So uh, get ready for some action shots of framing this project and uh hope you guys are enjoying this content in this format of kind of in in, in the office out of the office i'm um, showing you all the different stuff if you're interested in any of the stuff i'm talking about as far as sample files if you want to see the revit files if you want to see the um excel sheets where i'm tracking cost um the template files uh you name it um, head on over to community.bimafterdark.com. All members have access to the files for this project. So cheers. Uh, thanks for joining uh, episode 12 of the North Wing Project, and I'll see you guys soon.